Earlier this week, ICE Benchmark Administration, the administrator of LIBOR, announced that it will consult on its intention to cease publication of one week and two month US dollar LIBOR at the end of December, 2021, as well as stopping the remaining US dollar LIBOR settings immediately after publication on June 30th, 2023. This follows an announcement on November 18th that IBA will consult on its plans to cease publication of all sterling, euro, Swiss franc, yen LIBOR settings at the end of December 2021. Alongside the November 30th release from IBA, the Federal Reserve published a statement welcoming the development and encouraging banks to cease using US dollar LIBOR as soon as practical, and in any event, not later than uh, 2021. This was matched by a similar release from the UK Financial Conduct Authority, which set out some information about its proposed powers under the Financial Services Bill. Since then, there's been a lot of talk about uh, among market participants uh, how this will play out and what it means. Given that more than 1,500 entities have now adhered to the ISDA IBOR fallback protocol, there have also been understandably questions about the implications under the fallback calculation methodology. On this video, we'll try to answer some of those questions. I'm delighted to be joined by David Bowman, Senior Associate Director at the Federal Reserve Board, Edwin Schooling Ladder, Director of Markets and Wholesale Policy at the FCA, Deepak Sitlani, uh, partner at Linklaters, and Tom Whip, Vice Chairman of Institutional Securities at Morgan Stanley, Chairman of the Alternative Reference Rate Committee, and an ISDA board member. Now, Edwin, if you could start us off, can you recap for us briefly the key points of the IBA and FCA announcements on November 18th and November 30th? Thank you, Scott. So as you noted, IBA announced to the market its intention to consult on the cessation of all LIBOR currency and tenor settings on specified dates. It said there will be a single consultation covering all of them, which I anticipate will be published relatively soon. And IBA said the consultation will close by the end of January. IBA intends to consult on an end 2021 cessation for sterling, yen, Swiss franc, euro, and two of the lesser used US dollar LIBOR settings, and an end June 2023 stop for the remaining US dollar settings. IBA noted that after the feedback period has closed, it will publish a feedback statement and relevant determinations resulting from the consultation. The FCA made simul simultaneous statements. Those are in the context of IBA's proposals for a wind down of LIBOR and the powers that the UK government has proposed to confer upon the FCA to help ensure such a wind down is orderly. So we set out our current thinking on how we might use the proposed new powers, subject of course to consultation as explained in those statements. Now, the key points included these. So one, there were proposals on the framework under which and the circumstances in which we might consider it desirable and feasible to require continued publication of any LIBOR currency settings on the basis of a changed methodology. Now, this is what the market generally refers to as synthetic LIBOR. Two, we said that if we were to apply the proposed framework, given the facts as we know them currently, we didn't think those circumstances would exist for Euro or Swiss franc LIBOR, or indeed lesser used settings in any of the currencies, but that it appears they would likely exist for the more commonly used sterling settings. And number three, we noted that we would continue to assess whether they might exist for more heavily used yen and US dollar settings, depending on transition progress. As you all know, the 20 LIBOR panel banks agreed back in 2017 to continue contributing to LIBOR until the end of 2021. This was so the market would have a four and a half year period to transition away from LIBOR while remaining confident that LIBOR would continue to be published in a representative manner throughout that period. And that agreement remains in place. The FCA also welcomed and supported Monday's proposal 
for a further 18 month extension of the US dollar LIBOR panel to the end of June 2023 and following discussion with the US dollar LIBOR panel banks. This gives a further 18 month period to allow legacy US dollar LIBOR contracts to run off. But again, we think with confidence that the rate will be published on a representative basis until that proposed end date. Now, one intention of our discussions with panel banks both in 2017 and in recent weeks was to achieve collective confidence that a sufficiently strong panel and a representative rate could be maintained until an orderly end date for the panel. Thank you, Edwin. I think that's pretty clear. Now, will the consultation on the proposed end dates for LIBOR covering all five currencies? And what does that mean for the timing of future announcements? The consultation will cover all five currencies and will close by the end of January. And that should make it possible to determine and make announcements on the future path for all five currencies simultaneously, even if the proposed cessation date is different. So end December 2021 for four currencies and end June 2023 for some of the US dollar settings. I think everyone's aim will be to provide, to provide clarity to the market on all 35 settings as soon as practicable in line with the provisions and processes set out in the benchmarks regulation and applicable governance procedures. The more time that markets have to prepare, the better. Completely agree. Now, Deepak, how does all of this interact with the spread calculation contemplated in the ISDA documentation? Good question. So uh, firstly, just to say there are a number of aspects to ISDA's fallbacks work. So, so firstly, you have the IBOR fallbacks protocol for legacy positions that were entered into before the 25th of January 2021. You also have the IBOR fallback supplement to the 2006 ISDA definitions uh, for transactions that incorporate those definitions from January the 25th, 2021. So, so whilst that supplement is in final form, it has not yet gone live. Um, and then you also have Bloomberg's eyeball fallback rate adjustments rule book. Uh, and that sets out how the spread is calculated and when it is fixed. So whilst ISDA will no doubt coordinate closely with Bloomberg, it will be for Bloomberg to assess when the spread is fixed in accordance with the methodology set out in its rule book. So the first thing to say is that as per ISDA's announcement on Monday, uh, IBA's announcement of an intention to consult on the cessation of LIBOR or USD LIBOR as well, is not sufficient to be an index cessation event uh, under the ISDA documents or to be a spread adjustment fixing date under the Bloomberg rulebook. So this means that that announcement has not caused the spread to fix. Um, Edwin mentioned the IBA consultations for all LIBOR currencies and the prospect of an announcement for all currencies and tenors soon after the consultation closes. And Edwin also noted that he does not envisage any news before then that the panel would become non-representative before, before it ceased. So, so if that is the case, uh, and to now try and answer your question, Scott, uh, and the outcome of the consultation were in line with the proposals, an announcement relating to all US dollar LIBOR tenors would trigger a fixing of the spread for all tenors. And the fact that different USD LIBOR tenors would have different end dates would not impact when the spread itself is, is fixed. So, so I should stress that this is very much fact dependent. So, so for example, if there were an earlier announcement or an announcement that didn't cover all tenors, then the time at which the spread would be fixed may, may, may be different. So that's talking about when the spread would be fixed. A separate question is when the fallback rate, which includes the spread, um, is applied. And so looking at US dollar LIBOR, I would break the period from any announcement down into three distinct periods. So, so firstly, the period between the announcement and the end of 2021. So US dollar LIBOR in all its tenors would continue to be published and will be representative. So swap contracts that currently use those tenors would continue to do so. So effectively no, no change. The second period is the period between the end of 2021 and the end of June, 2023. So here all tenors except the one week and two month tenors would continue to be published 
um, would be representative. And so swaps that use those tenors would continue to do so. So again, no change for those contracts. But then if you look at the one week and two month tenors, and if they are last published at the end of 2021, obviously contracts that use those tenors can no longer use them. However, those contracts would not immediately fall back to the fallback rate. So instead, because the other USD LIBOR tenors continue to be available and representative, the ISDA documents contemplate the rate being determined using linear interpolation. So this isn't something that Bloomberg would do, rather it's for the calculation agent under the, under the swap. So, so the one week rate can be calculated by interpolating between the overnight and one month rates. And the two month rate can be calculated by interpolating between the one month and the three month rate. So then the, the final time period is from the end of June 2023 onwards. So at that point, the overnight one month, three month, six month and 12 month rates would cease to be published. And so swaps would fall back to the fallback rate. So the Bloomberg published compounded SOFA plus spread adjustment. And the spread applied here will have been fixed in early 2021. So at the time of the announcement relating to, to all USD LIBOR tenors. And similarly, uh, as the one week and two month tenors can no longer at that point be calculated using linear interpolation because the overnight one month and three month tenors would no longer be available. Swaps using those tenors would also from the end of June, 2023, fall back to the fallback rate. So I know there's a lot of detail there. So to, to get a bit more, it's definitely worth flagging that there is a wealth of information on the benchmark reform and transition from LIBOR page on ISDA's website. So that includes various videos, FAQs on the fallbacks document and a fact sheet summarizing Bloomberg's approach to the fallback rate and spread fixing. Thank you. Um, so to be clear, Deepak, uh, if there were to be an announcement next year after the IBA consultation as to the cessation of the US dollar LIBOR, this would trigger the spread calculation? Yes, so an announcement early next year for all USD LIBOR tenors would fix the spread for all tenors. Uh, and in that instance, the spread would be applied. So that's to say contract would fall back to the fallback rate after June, 2023, even for the one week and two month tenors. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, do you think it would be possible to maintain a representative U.S. dollar LIBOR until the end of June 2023? Yes, the FCA would not be welcoming and supporting this proposed extension unless we were confident that representativeness thresholds could be maintained in terms of the number of panel banks. So some of the coverage of Monday, November the 30th's announcements has noted, we think this proposal more or less eliminates the risk of a so-called zombie panel in any of the LIBOR currencies. We've always wanted to avoid the risk of a large proportion of panel banks exiting the panel before a more orderly wind down could be achieved, as that would have left a small, fragile and unrepresentative panel that I think no one really wanted to see. Correct. David, um, can you talk about the announcements from the Federal Reserve, the FDIC and the OCC? Certainly, as you noted, IBA's and FCA's announcements were not the only ones on Monday morning. Uh, importantly, the Federal Reserve Board, um, the FDIC and OCC together released supervisory guidance that makes it clear that given consumer protection, litigation, reputation risks, entering into new contracts that use US dollar LIBOR's reference rate after December 31st, 2021, would in their opinion create safety and soundness risks and they stated that they will examine bank practices accordingly. The agencies encourage banks to cease entering into new contracts that use US dollar LIBOR as a reference rate as soon as is practicable. And in any event, um, no later than December 31st, 2021. They encouraged um, banks to uh, uh, practice that new contracts entered into before December 31st, 2021 should either utilize a reference rate other than LIBOR, which I think would be the preference, or have robust fallback language that includes a clearly defined alternative reference rate after LIBOR's discontinuation. And they do have some carve outs within the guidance um, for derivative transactions post 2021 related to market making for legacy, that is 
contracts entered into um, uh, by the end of 2021 uh, instruments and hedging or reducing client or bank exposures. But the message overall is that people should not expect much new activity in US solar LIBOR after 2021. On the Federal Reserve side, um, we think that this represents a significant step forward in the LIBOR transition. The proposed path and supervisory statements laid out on Monday would enable a clear end date for US dollar LIBOR and would promote the safety and soundness of the financial system. The announcements together lay out a path forward which banks would stop writing new US dollar LIBOR contracts by the end of 2021 while most legacy contracts would be able to mature before LIBOR officially stops in June 30, 2023. Thank you, David. Uh, Edwin, back to you. The FCA's announcement on November 30th uh, also mentioned restrictions on uh, the use of new US dollar LIBOR after uh, the end of 2021. Can you explain how that would work? Yes, of course. So while we've not yet issued a formal consultation on this and any final approach would be subject to that consultation process, we did highlight the proposed new powers for the FCA to restrict new use of a critical benchmark, which is known to be ceasing. And we noted that we would look to coordinate with US and other authorities as we developed our policy with regard to US dollar LIBOR in particular. Now, of course, any restrictions applied by the FCA um, would apply to regulated financial instruments entered into by FCA supervised firms, um, but we hope they could fit together uh, with steps taken in the United States and elsewhere. Thank you. Tom, let's bring you in. How do you see a one and a half year extension for US dollars in terms of the transition? Thank you, Scott. So, so first, I want to echo uh, the importance of understanding these announcements and, and would encourage all market participants to read through each announcement carefully. The IBA, FCA, ISDA, and the Fed statement, and the supervisory guidance. Uh, it's particularly important to understand what IBA has communicated in its announcement on the consultation timeline and think through what it means in terms of the ISDA, IBOR, fallbacks protocol, and the fixing of the spread adjustment. Second, taking a step back, I look at these various announcements as a complete package with two key messages. The first message is the supervisory guidance has a clear message that reinforces the importance of market participants preparing for no new LIBOR at the end of 2021. This aligns well with the work the ARC has done to set out best practice recommendations for readiness, including systems, vendors, and recommended timelines around discontinuing new LIBOR activity across cash products, all in advance of end 2021. Second, this establishes a potential mechanism that can help support the roll off of a substantial portion of LIBOR link legacy contracts. That helps us focus on the remaining legacy exposures that would extend past the mid 2023 date, and especially the tough legacy contracts that after mid 2023 won't have an effective means of transitioning away from LIBOR at its end. The ARC's proposed legislative solution for these contracts is an essential part of a smooth transition. And finally, I just wanna note that these are some of the most consequential announcements on LIBOR in many years. We now have a clear proposed path for the wind down of US dollar LIBOR with supervisory guidance that affirms all of our planning for no new LIBOR at the end of 2021 and proposed cessation dates for LIBOR that will let most legacy contracts roll off. We now have a very good sense of what needs to be done by the end of 2021, and we should be moving with all speed to make that happen. The ARC has lots of tools, templates, and resources to help make that happen. Thank you, Tom. Edwin, uh, to be clear, does this proposed extension of some of the US dollar tenors mean that it is more likely that the end date of sterling, yen, or other LIBOR panels will change? So the proposed extension to, to US dollars um, does not and has not changed the proposed end date for other currencies. We do not see a need to continue the sterling panel beyond end 2021, and we do not think the US dollar extension means that the same would be appropriate for sterling. Uh, as a follow-on, is the pre-cessation trigger event still relevant? 
Yes, in a particular context. And that's because a possibility in Sterling, for example, is that it's clear the panel will end, but the FCA has advised IBA that it envisages consulting on continued publication on a changed methodology or synthetic basis. Now, in that case, the FCA could announce that the rate will not be published on a representative basis beyond the end of 2021. That's a pre-cessation announcement. But the economic um, impact on the market and the timing is the same. So it's an unambiguous triggering of the spread calculation on exactly the same day. Thank you. Uh, Edwin, how would the FCA calculate the spread that might be included in a synthetic LIBOR if you required publication in that way? Important question. So on November 18, we also set out our proposals on what sort of methodology change we would envisage. So term risk-free rates plus a fixed credit spread. And we propose to calculate the spread in exactly the same way as ISDA does. And we drew attention in that consultation paper to the many benefits of having exactly the same number as in the ISDA and other fallbacks in terms of maintaining hedges and aligning with the approach taken by those who are transitioning away from the benchmark through the ISDA protocol or cash product fallbacks recommended by national working groups, in several jurisdictions. Now, as we repeatedly emphasize, no one should rely on a synthetic LIBOR. Now, that's why it's so important to sign the protocol. But the approach we've proposed there would mean that you can also sign the protocol in the knowledge that if it did appear necessary or desirable and feasible for the FCA to require publication of LIBOR on a synthetic basis, you would not have been better off if you'd waited for that outcome. So signing the protocol takes away the risk of ending up with no reference rate, while our proposed approach to synthetic takes away the risk that signing the protocol leaves you in a worse expected position than under synthetic. Perfect. Can you uh, ex please explain the uh, next steps the F in the FCA timeline? Yeah, of course. So our consultation on designation and methodology change powers closes on January the 18th. Now we would consider responses and announce our policy framework thereafter, probably on the same sort of timeline as IBA announces its feedback and terminations. Now subsequent decisions actually to use our proposed new powers, for example, in respect of Sterling LIBOR, would of course need to wait until future consultations have taken place and proposed powers are on the statute book. But where we had a clear intent to consult on using those powers, for example, in Sterling, we will continue to make that clear to the market. And as we've noted in respect of yen and even more so in dollar, we'll monitor progress on transition before making any proposals. Now, next year, we will also consult further on how we might use our powers to restrict use where a rate has a known impending cessation date. And subject to IBA's consultation, that could of course be the case for US dollar LIBOR with that short term continuation until an end date of June 2023. And as you know, for a rate like Sterling LIBOR where publication after end 2021 could, again subject to consultation, be on a non-representative synthetic basis, there would also be a prohibition, a prohibition on new use for FCA supervised firms. Now, in the meantime, I should emphasize that we expect market participants to continue to actively transition away from LIBOR in accordance with the timeline set out by the relevant national working groups here in the UK, in the US, and in other jurisdictions. Now, this expectation also applies, of course, to the five US dollar LIBOR um, settings that will cease to be published prospectively um, after June 30, 2023, um, subject to IBA's consultation. So this does not give market participants a reason not to adhere to the ISDA IBOR fallbacks protocol or otherwise defer their transition work in relation to US dollar LIBOR. Terrific. Thank you very much. Um, I think that brings us to the end of this webinar. I'd like to thank our panelists for their 
very specific and clear answers. Uh, as, as always, you can use the uh, ISDA resources and the benchmark fallback um, resource on our website and consult your documentation as been advised. Thank you very much for watching.